Hey guys, good morning. This is my Sunday conversation I'd like to have with you guys. Either I'll do it myself or I have a guest, but I want to talk a little bit about something. You know, I do a lot of readings and lately I've been turning them down because I had my summer special and so I'm just sort of giving myself a break. But as I remember over the course of this summer, and it started actually spring, I started giving those readings in May all the way through August. That's a long time. Every day, sometimes two or three a day. And of course, people want to know about their finances or if they're going to move or about their career. Those are like the main ones. And some people want to know what spiritual path they're on. You get some people like that as well. But believe it or not, regardless of what someone's age, race, gender, orientation, what have you, the number one question that they want to know is, is there somebody for them? When are they going to meet their Mr. or Ms. Wright? And so I do the reading for them. And I thought today would be a really good day to tell you about us. And it's not just you. It's me. Here's the deal. When you are out looking for someone or someone is drawn into your life, I want you to pay attention to this. Now, if this doesn't resonate with you, scroll on. I, my feelings won't be hurt, but I want you to listen. This person tends to up being a person who is a complicated loner. Complicated loner. Yeah, that's a different type of type. We have the narcissists and we have the playboys and we have the mama's boys and we have the cheaters and, and all of those. But the complicated loner, um, that's who it is. And here's the deal. I'm going to be honest with you. If you can't take honesty today, it's not a good Sunday. But truthfully, you prefer that type. It may be on a subconscious level, maybe on a conscious level, but you prefer them. And here's the funny thing, that when you meet this individual, they think you are the complicated loner. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting, like in many things in life, you can't see it. You don't recognize them as a complicated loner, not at all. Your friends tell you, your family tell you, they let you know, hey, this this person's not right for you. This They're not your type. They're to this, they're to that. But mm -mm, they're just right for you. You like this person. I'm going to tell you why. You like how they chase you, but you also like you how you chase them. You find them to be quite intriguing because you don't just look at people on the surface. You like to go deeper, but they, they don't. They only look at the surface of you. They're, they're not going deep. That is what they like. They like surface, not you. You don't like surface people. You want to dig deeper into this person. You want to analyze everything about them, the way they think, the way they speak, their actions. You like to analyze it and to pick it apart. You like to have the answers to why. Why did they do this? Why did they do that? Why did they break up with so-and-so? Why are they single? Why are they on an app? Why, why, why? You need to understand that person like what makes them move that's what you like to understand you want to know things like what happened to them when they were a child or in their youth you want to know like all of that and at the beginning of this relationship with the complicated loner it is fantastic because in the midst of the night or in the afternoon you have these long, in-depth conversations where you are digging and probing and you're trying to put the pieces together and you're trying to read between the lines what is true, what may be exaggerated, what's being held back. But the truth of it is, at the beginnings, when you're having those long, deep conversations, that's the only time you'll have them. 
you don't have them after that. Everything tends to just fall apart or go downhill or there's less and less communication. You're in one room, they're in another room. You're watching one show, they're watching another show. You want to be, go for a walk, you know, in the park or whatever, they want to take a nap. And it continues to be that. What is really happening is that you are attracted to people who show you confidence. They, they act in a confident way. They speak in a confident, confident way. They have swag. They, they seem to have it together. They've got goals. They know what they want. They know how they're going to get it. They know when they're going to get it. They know all the tactics and things that they're going to use. And even though there's really not a lot underneath the surface between the two of you, this intrigues you. This keeps you there. This offers that security, that stability that you often didn't have when you were growing up. You may have grown up in a home where there was alcoholism, there could have been pill poppers, there could be people with mental health uh, issues, whether diagnosed or undiagnosed, or they might have had physical issues and you were the caretaker even though you were a child, or you were the wife to your dad because mom had to work all the time. Yeah, that was your role. And now here someone comes in and they look like They've got it together just the way that you want. And it feels good to you and you are not letting that go. And even though you know you don't have those deep talks anymore, you're still in this investigative hunt. They don't realize it. They don't realize it. They don't know that you are still on this hunt for answers of who they are and what they are about. But what they offer you is this sense of security, something that you have longed for. Someone like, it feels like they got you, the stability and the security. And yet, as you begin to continue listening to their stories, you soon begin to hear when they tell them over and over, those stories change, or that's not what really happened. You find the dishonesty in there. You start seeing a pattern where they separated themselves from some other significant other for this reason and that reason and that reason, but it was always somebody else's fault. It was never their fault. They're not there for you in the way that you thought they would be. You thought, okay, they got a great job. That'll help me out financially. I can help some with mine. And then you find that you're paying the most, but they're holding back on theirs money. You find that they have alarm clocks and everything else to get up in the morning, but you got to wake them up yourself because they can't seem to manage to, how did they get up before you came along? Or you find that you've got to wash and fold and launder everything and you stack it up nicely and there it sits in that pile for two weeks until, you know, basically it's time to wash again. What you begin to find out is because you've dug so much that this person is not the security that you needed. They never were offering you stability like you thought that you were. And then what happens? You know what happens. Then you get cold. You get cold. You pull away. Now you're no longer begging them to watch this TV show with me or watch this movie with me or let's go to lunch or let's take a walk in the park or, or on the beach or wherever you are. You're not even asking anymore. You've learned how to secure your own self and feel good about yourself. And once that situation goes cold, well, you know how that goes in the end. And then you find... Uh, that this is not for me. This is the pattern. This is not just me or just you. This is the pattern across the board. The goal is to go into a situation already feeling good because see, when you're searching security and stability, what you have forgotten to look for is worth, your self-worth. The fact that you deserve 
the time, the attention, the conversation, the what have you. The same thing that you were giving or willing to give is the same thing that you need in return. It's not about just having a partner who's there. They're there every day. So, you know, now I don't have to be concerned about them cheating. They're there. Mm -mm. They have to put into you as you put into them. But the first person you need to put in is you. And that's finding the self-worth that you need is filling up your own cup of love. And being honest with yourself from the very beginning, if you find that you've got to dig and probe and probe and you're finding things in this person and you didn't look at them the first time and you discounted those red flags, and now this time I'm going to look at the red flags. I'm going to take those red flags seriously because they mean something and they're trying to show you to show you something. Trust your gut. Trust your heart. Wherever you feel your intuition and know this is not for me. Oftentimes we get out of something and then we're ready to jump right back into something. But when do we take time for us? It tends to be males who tend to get over something by getting up under something. We ladies don't have to do that. We can take the time to heal if, if it requires healing or looking at lesson. What did I learn from this person? Because anybody that comes to your life, no matter how long or how short, there's something that they learned. The number one that you think, I think that we all should be learning is that you can't get your stability and security from no other person. Irregardless of what happened in those younger days, we have to come to a time where we are healing ourselves from that, which is a lifelong process. Trust me, it's sitting with the pain, sitting with the memories and then allowing them to dissipate and knowing, wait a minute, I'm worth that attention. I'm worth that hug. I'm worth that lunch or whatever that you buy. That's the pattern. That's who you attract. And then you come to me, you want me to tell you that you're going to attract somebody new. What's new in you? What have you been doing that's different? Because if you keep doing the same things, you're just going to get the same person over and over. Didn't they say that that's the definition of crazy? Insanity. Yeah, I can't look at my cards and send you the love of your life when you haven't woke up and realized, oh, this is the love of my life. Let me love that little inner child in me, that little Joyce that didn't get the love and the attention or the little you who didn't get what they needed. And let me give them and feed them what they need, because at that point, I will attract the person and the situation that is right for me. And I'm not going to be so needing to dig and probe and everything with this complicated loner because they're not going to be complicated. They're going to be open and willing and wanting to mesh hearts together. That's my message for you today. We, we're closer to death than we are to 21. And if we don't start loving ourselves like this, period, I have no makeup on. I got the gray. I'm letting the gray bear grow back from when I colored my hair. The crazy eyebrows, the whatever, whatever, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I don't need to be fixed. I'm fine just the way that I am. Same as you. If these young girls can be out here and be 300, 400, 500 pounds when they're 20 years old and still be feeling good and sexy, well, we can too. And I'm a love on me because the truth of the matter is we don't need anybody to make it in this world. You got you. You got you. Anyways, guys, take the message, thumbs it up, leave a comment. Tell me how you think. Tell me what you feel. Tell me if this is you. Have a good day.